Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a 2v2 for you today on Eindhoven between two solid teams. Honestly, when your buddy sends you a replay and says, you gotta watch this, you listen. And I'll let you guys decide whether or not that was a bright, a bright decision on my part. Uh, for the Axis, both players are Wehrmacht Mechanized Battle Group. We have Gatsby from South Korea. He's ranked number 611, but he only has a handful of games, so I'm guessing this is a new account. You can see he knows what he's doing. And then Jiro is teammate from Slovakia, ranked number 256. On the allied side, we have Ares from America, ranked number 36 with US forces, using the Advanced Infantry Battle Group. And then his teammate, Dumbass, also from America, ranked number 114 with the Brits, using the Air and Sea Battle Group. Casting this one with me is my boy Fred, who recently started doing his own Company of Heroes 3 casts. The link to his channel is in the description below. Check it out when you get a chance. What this match demonstrates more than anything else is the value of coming in and fighting as a team with a clear strategy. I know that one mistake that I make all the time is I default to like a side-by-side -side 1v1 uh, kind of match style in 2v2s, and I think that only gets you so far. This match really shows the value of teamwork and winning the tough matches that go late. And with that in mind, let's get to it. Hey everyone, so uh, we got in the, at the bottom of the screen, kind of the southwest corner of the map, uh, Jiro and Gatsby, the Axis players, Jiro in red and Gatsby in purple. And then at the top of the map here, we've got the allied team. So we've got Ares in blue playing the Americans and Dumbass in teal playing the Brits. Fred, I feel like this is your uh, your home territory. You know, being Dutch, <laughs> yeah. playing only Dutch maps. It's, a, it's an interesting yeah. meta. Uh, yeah, yeah, good. Indeed. I, Go for I it, got man. that, man. I got. I also. I always have that. When I play two v twos, I'm getting Dutch maps. I'm getting Els Outskirts or Road to Eindhoven. So, yeah, yeah. This map. So while they're kind of getting set up, I wanted to talk a little bit about this map. So this is a uh, you know based on a Code Two map, um, and I I think it's honestly it's it's an interesting. Like it's a very like it doesn't feel narrow, but I think it ends up playing pretty narrow compared to some of the other 2v2 maps because you have these resource pockets uh, on the flanks but most of the combat ends up kind of rolling through the middle especially because you see on the right hand side uh, that built up area with all those like path blockers and site blockers and yeah, cover it, it it plays a little bit funky but i'm i'm generally a fan of these like asymmetrically designed maps because i think it it forces the gameplay to change up and, you know, everything doesn't play out like Road to Tunis. But, you know, as someone from the Netherlands, you know, what do you think about having these, like, maps where one side is, is definitely different than the other? Yeah, I think it's 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 kind of cool. Like, in this map, you see uh, the early game, you see most of the time, especially, I guess, in the castle, on the right side, you see a lot of play because there is a lot of cover there. I guess on the, on the left side, where the, the high ground uh, is with the, the lighting and things, it sees a little less uh, play. But yeah, I like these uh, asymmetrical maps as well. It just, yeah, it, it just gives a little uh, different, a, a different angle uh, on how to play. Yeah, and it, um, it changes up from time to time. You can't play it the same way every time. Yeah. So I wanted to yeah. point out one thing here in the center. So you had Jiro kind of charge the Dingo with his Grens. And with the way that currently the game is built, right, the penetration of the rifles doesn't change against the vehicles. It's going to be the same. It doesn't change over distance. Um, and the target size of the vehicle is high enough that it's not a matter of accuracy. It's a matter of penetration. But there's risk yeah. in charging the Dingo because if you get within that point blank mechanic, now the dingo can ignore the cover that you're in um and you take extra damage so i understand he's trying to close the distance keep the dingo from getting away but you got to be careful doing that uh and yeah, basically, especially against the dingo yeah although it may see some nerfs here in the short future so <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah Ares successfully pushing off uh the kind of encroachment onto this munitions point the mg42 turns to face it looks like both Gatsby and Jiro going for the early infantry officers' quarters. Um, meanwhile, yeah. you got Ares with a pretty standard build right now: engineer squad, rifle, three rifles, and a scout. And then Dumbass doing the same. Yeah, there's the MG42 forces the retreat. Uh, yeah, like I said, like 
the cast off side of the map just sees a lot of more play in like the early game just because it's it's more suited for infantry with all the green cover yeah you're right that makes a lot of sense um, this mg42 doing a lot of damage to these rifles yeah areas retreats they still may lose a model which on retreat dingo gets whittled down uh i guess by the grenadiers you know that dumbass wants to go hunt uh this mg42 with the dingo yeah i should repair it first though so this I, I don't totally understand this decision so you see gatsby is upgrading uh medical like the base medical coverage but he just did vet one for uh, all of his grenadiers and he's got three of them so he's basically he has two forms of medical coverage now yeah i think it's a mistake you don't need it maybe he doesn't know about uh about uh, the medical the healing from the grenadiers but yeah Meanwhile, the Allies are making good use of the early fuel control. You see, Dumbass is already building a cache on this one fuel point, and Ares already has BARs out and is now teching his own med yeah. station. He's going for the advanced infantry battle group, which is pretty interesting, going bars and uh, the advanced infantry. So, pretty interested to see if we're going to see Rangers if he went for bars. Yeah, that... That's an interesting combination, because normally you consider BARs to be kind of a downgrade for Rangers. Ooh! Pioneer squad gunned down by Dingo and some infantry sections. And then looking at the Axis players, really leaning heavily into these Grenadier builds. Um, Ooh, Grenadier in trouble. Yeah. It's probably going, going down as well. Yeah, the Dingo can chase a little bit here and ignore the suppression. Oh. Yeah, that's a big loss for Jiro losing two yeah. squads there. Yeah. And honestly, he's getting back right up into his base by dumbass here. Now here's the MG42 to cover. And meanwhile, Gatsby has done a good job while Ares has been off the field, kind of counter capping and regaining their fuel control. So X is not totally out of it here. Now here comes the, the BAR rifle platoon from Ares. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why why Jiro built a bunker there I, I guess it's gonna be a medical bunker but it's not a bad spot for the med bunker yeah, but both players went for the the mechanized so probably gonna see a lot of eight rats from both players they both went mechanized yeah eight yeah, rods and uh nice. oh these grenadiers if the rifles can get kind of set up on their retreat i love how all of these rifle squad models have like night vision sights hey relic you yeah, realize nice. that night vision sights were really rare in world war ii right okay i just want to make sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i like those those night fighters are really cool it's uh i guess it was from amazon those skins you could get from amazon yeah 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 it was like uh I like this. So I see like uh, Dumbass went from for air and sea and instantly upgraded to fuel with a cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although it's gonna so, this early if he can if they can keep it, it's gonna get a it's gonna get the allies a lot of extra munitions. Yeah. Well, what I I actually I really like what Gatsby's doing here and like he realizes he's not necessarily winning all these fights, but he is using. There's the mass of Grenadiers that he's got out to continue to try to put pressure. Now, you know, oh, Ares using the assault position. Yeah. I <laughs> I like that. I haven't, it doesn't feel as effective as you'd like it to be when I've tried to use it, but it's a good use of the battle, battle group ability there. Here's a half track. I think they nerfed it, maybe they did nerf it, right? I, it was I, better. I think they did. Now here's the MG42 on the flank, plus this is about to pop and be a, a stummel. These rifles have a, a long retreat. There we go. Yeah. That's a good decision. Oh, the rifles are still in the arc of the MG. Yeah. Nice. But the dingo the right MG. here. Ooh. Yeah, it's showing its back. Wow, how is the MG42 so alive? There we go. It gets gunned down. Wow, and the horde of German grenadiers. They recaptured the MG42. Oh. Stummel doing good damage there. Yeah. The Stummel is really good against these, especially US infantry heavy builds. You see Ares has healing up in their headquarters. 
and then you see the first eight rod hit the field so we've seen the allies pretty prepared for the anti-vehicle play or anti-infantry play but not necessarily the anti-vehicle yeah but uh, i thought Aris was going for an, an a two at guns now as well so yeah and now uh, Jiro using some of that manpower he built up by having not a lot of pop cap. Uh, he's getting an AT gun out now. Another 251 on the field for Gatsby. Or is that just a glitch on the replay review? It might be. Interesting to see. Irish went for, with the, with the advanced infantry, he went for the, the mechanized support center. So probably not going to see ranges because they will bleed way too much. He definitely, yeah, to upgrade. he almost certainly wants the 76 mil upgrade or the other option, right? Those canister rounds are really powerful. So if you can get into the motor pool, he's got an AT gun out. But if you wanted to play um, with Chaffees with Greyhounds, the mechanized support center really helps you in that that aspect. Both players just unlocked their uh, just unlocked their eight ref. And now Dumbas is probably suspect, suspecting the Aetherats because he's going for Crusaders. Yeah, he needs to uh, he needs to get this dingo off the field before the Aetherat runs it down. Um, yeah. You see one six-pounder out and one US M1 AT gun out. Meanwhile, here comes Ares Infantry on the flank. AT gun just out of position to get a shot off on the Stummel. Here we go. So it'll get one here. You know, the 8-rod and Grenadiers counter-pushing. And a Crusader already from Dumbass. Yeah. Like I said, he was just expect. Well, good thing they killed uh, one of those uh, caches on the Muni. Yeah, that's a it's a 10-minute Crusader. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty good. And then you can withdraw and refit that Dingo if you want, because now you got the Tier 4 up. Yeah, I guess that's, that's because... Uh, because the, the the resource cache there on the fuel being there for like four minutes now, maybe five. Yeah, yeah, that's a it's a smart play. It's good evidence. I mean, I know these guys play together, but that that's a good indicator that they spend time playing together. And then on the yeah. opposite side of the map here, another eight rod out from Gat Gatsby. Oh, it takes one AT gun round. It's not moving away. One follow. Oh, smoke. pops the smoke. Attack yeah. round through smoke too late. It was in an awkward position there on the ramp into the castle. Yeah. <laughs> you saw the you saw the pathing the the, the greyhound or the greyhound the the, the eight red was just I don't know a little bit dancing before returning back. Yeah. Well, so this is kind of wild because it really looked like the allies had good early game presence, uh, good kind of KD and trades, um, good map control, and yet the axis are on the advance here based on mainly a couple of eight rods, a stumel, and a lot of grenadiers. Um, yeah. And so I think, you know, this, what were you saying? Yeah, I wanted to say, you, you still see that Jiro lacks like front, front line infantry. He still hasn't gotten like uh, an extra grenadier. But I think so. at this point, you almost don't want to over reinvest in the grenadiers, right? Like we saw that um, in a game I casted not too long ago, that overinvestment can be just as dangerous. Uh, you know, forget who the guy was. Oh, yeah, they eight rod interrupt. knocked out. Yeah. But you know, four squads of Grenadiers does not scale well into the late game. Now I know we're not going to see advanced logistics or survivability, but the U.S. rifles still scale just fine. And Ares always has the option to convert these guys to Rangers for even more close-range DPS. Big engagement in the middle. Ooh, another good salvo knocks out the eight rod. Yeah. Jiro. Uh, Dumbus didn't went for any upgrades yet. Oh, Jiro upgraded. I see what he did. So he put a cache on this fuel back here, and now he's using the recent ability to add it as a forward retreat point. So he's just oh, trying that's... to take a little bit of the slack out of uh, retreating and healing. Is smart yeah but it's expensive it is but you know especially on a map like this with how far back your units are in the base sector when they retreat i mean that like 15 seconds of walking can save you some engagements oh, this yeah that's true yeah forced to back out Mark, 
Oh, Satchel coming in on MG42. He doesn't see it. That thing's done. Mm, Oof. Big explosion. Yeah. Woodgar is forcing off some grenadiers on the opposite side. So, like we were talking about, as this map loaded in, I think we're going to see big pushes through the center here. Oh, and here yeah. you go. Here are the Panzer Grenadiers you were asking for. Yeah, there they come. They are uh, not going to do that well against four <laughs> squads, though. <laughs> No, the Panzer Grenadiers were in an awkward position there, out in the open. Yeah, and it looks like the foot guard is going to try to knock out this, uh, yeah, this AT back. gun. <laughs> Meanwhile, there we go. They, they lost a couple of models to this Gren sniping them. <clears throat> Two more Pack 38s in the back here for Jiro, yeah. and another one. There comes the second Crusader. Yeah, the Crusader got nerfed a couple of times, um, and so I'm kind of interested in seeing how it, do how it does. I haven't played with it all that much since the patch. I think if you're the Brits, you either go with like the Stuart for the mid game, or then you go for like Matildas and Grants. And so I don't see Crusaders as much anymore. But I remember. I see them. I see them more lately. Mm -hmm. So without like convert converting to the six pounder gun it's doing really well against uh, really well against uh, infantry as well so it wasn't matilda i was just uh, <laughs> i was a kid thrown off by the like the the icon it's almost the same <laughs> so i was thrown off a bit it wasn't matilda yeah. which is a good choice oh he's going oh okay yeah so i see a matilda oh and some base artillery coming in now, another squad of Panzer Grenadiers out for Gatsby. This, I think... I, I wonder if this is a mistake. He's got a lot of fuel. I think in this map, and especially against these infantry, I'd rather see the Stoss trooping. Yeah, I think so as well. The Crusader on the flank, tangling with the 8 rod. The Grens snare it, but that's not really going to stop it, and now it can pursue... Oh, there are two pack 40s waiting for it though. With the yeah, Matildas they, on the back yeah. side. Oh, those packs are in trouble. Meanwhile, good counter push by Gatsby just rolling right through Ares' uh, kind of fortifications here. Knocks out two AT guns, somehow rolls past this machine gun. Rifles force retreat. There's an ammo cache. And an M2A1 howitzer there at risk. Even this rifle squad is in trouble. They're so low health. Oh, here comes a couple grenades. Ooh. Reading the nades. Oh, man. The triple vet rifle squad gets away with, like, negative two health. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the grenadier also has, like, negative two health. Oh, good dodge on the grenade over here. Uh, oh, this Matilda might be at risk. Yeah. There's, there comes the Grenadier squad to flank. Oh, good pickup. So one of the AT guns gets knocked out. No! Can the Grenadiers get a Faust off, though? Yeah, I think these... they the bothered wrong. Would the wrong I, side of I would the... have loved to see the Grens pick up the AT gun and then immediately merge into it so that it has a full crew. That's a lot harder to clear. Yeah. Oh, there's the merge. So, Ares taking a little bit of a beating. Uh, on the side of the map here, and he's you can tell he's trying to kind of play a support role. He's got the howitzer up um, He's gonna he's gonna support his own MG bunker with another one <laughs> <laughs> he's Trying to control that cutoff yeah, He doesn't want he doesn't want the, the those B grants getting in close anymore Oh, so he's found that med bunker and he's trying to hit it with the M21. It's a long-range shot There's gonna be a significant amount of scatter Ooh, yeah, eight rats. <laughs> has to be careful now yeah. there because how it's reshooting. Yeah, I wouldn't leave that there. Oh, and then the shell hits exactly where it was. <laughs> that yeah. gets away. Yeah, man, these Grens just kind of running and shooting at this AT gun, uh, almost decrewing it. So it's one of those things where like, yeah, the Crusader and the Matilda should win against two Grand Squads, but they're both so low health, you don't really want to risk the snare and a potential follow-up shot from this Pack 40. Yeah, 
Oh, and so they're I just see gonna... that Jiro cleared like. Now he clears this uh, resource cache on the Muni, but the one on the fuel is also already gone. So, yeah. good job of preventing the uh, the allies from uh, just getting all these extra resources for nothing. Yeah, the downside though. Uh, for the Axis is they have spent most of the game fighting over control of their own fuel and not enough time fighting over uh, the allied fuel point. Oh, Pegren's yeah. moving up, but they're going to run into this Matilda and that is going to be problematic. More Grenadiers come up and they think better fit as the, the Bren Blob comes out. Oh, the Raiding Flash. Interesting to see. Yeah. The Assault Flash, sorry. Oh, scout squad annihilated by Grens in a mine. But I think Ares will take that. He has capped up uh, the entire southeast corner of the map. The infantry section is doing a ton of damage. Here's yeah, the some... infantry section should get into cover for the extra accuracy bonus, though. I, it's one of those things, like, you see it much more in, like, 2v2s, like, in team games than in ones, where, like, Players don't even have to worry about throwing units in cover. They're more concerned about concentrating <laughs> fire. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. No, like you're not wrong. He should 100% be trying to use him from cover to cover. But the micro attacks at this point, when you're a whole the Crusader trying to kill the eight rad through uh, the hedge, whiffs on two attack rounds, Ooh. but the AT guns nice. do not, and that Crusader forced to back up. Well, it's nice use of attack ground, I guess. Yeah, really good use of it. Oh, MG42 knocked out. Is that another howitzer? Yeah, Ares has a second yeah. howitzer. Yeah, he's playing SimCity over there. Somebody needs to bombard them. Yeah, and those howitzers, once they get veterancy and they get the charged shells, oh, yeah, they just become... nasty. Oh, so deadly. <laughs> yes, another another MG bunker and a third howitzer is coming up now. I he... think Ares is playing a different game. He's not playing Company of Heroes. He's playing SimCity. <laughs> He's playing SimCity 2000. <laughs> well, Gatsby has been whittled down. You see his uh, population, both of the Axis players, really taking some hits here. But still good map control, and, on, and they're leading on VPs as well. And so they're still very much in this game, especially with how much fuel they've saved up. Here come the I'm Panzer still Green. interested to see, to, like, uh, Ares going for uh, the MSC, he's to, but he, he doesn't go for really for tanks, he's, he just <laughs> figured out he was going, using all his fuel for howitzers. So. Yeah, oh, here come the boys. Alright, so we got Ares automated assault push here coming on out. And it looks like they're going to drive right through the center onto this forward retreat point and med bunker. One pack 40 in place, starts to play the Matilda. Oh, oh, again, the Matilda wiped three models with one shot. Yeah, both of those AT guns are cleared. And yeah, the, the infantry assault as well. Yeah, but you've got the MG42, which is in a good spot to cover. Oh, eight rod gets knocked out on the flank by the foot guards. And now here come the big artillery barrages. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta cancel his forward retreat. Oh man. Yeah, I think he already did. Or, oh no, he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. There's a naval warfare out now for Jiro as well. So Jiro, his medical uh, bunker is knocked out. He's about to lose this. Oh, but here's a Panther, and so Gatsby, not only counter capping on the side here and doing a lot of damage to these rifles, yeah. but Panther on the field to force away the Matilda and the Crusader. Pegrens are about to go down on the side. No, oh, they're they're too they, durable. They they're gonna get away. Yeah. Interested to see that he went for the side though. He could also have supported Jiro there with his Panther and the infantry, and maybe try getting <laughs> one of those uh, vehicles like the Matilda. Yeah, it's an interesting. So you have basically two options, right? One is to push back with your teammate and try to save him. The other option is to counter punch. Um, yeah. And I think what he was maybe hoping is like, hey, if I swing through here and pull Blue's attention, maybe I can get some like cheeky kills or some counter cap. Um, but now the problem is with this horde headquarters that Jiro had set up destroyed, 
Ares is free to bombard their base sector. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ares also went for like a second uh, ammunition cache now nearest uh, AT guns. Oh, yeah. But why, why there? Uh, yeah, probably to indeed uh, get like the AT guns some. Uh, I think it's uh, affecting the reload speed from the AT guns as well. Mm. So, 33% reload speed on AT guns, that's nasty. Oh, the base sector bombardment underway. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, not, that's, nice. that's not good. Um, <laughs> here's a, the problem though, if you look at this, Juro and Gatsby both floating a ton of resources. So, yeah, a lot of fuel. You know, maybe they're waiting on cooldown to get the Panther on the field. At, at least they both went mechanized, and as long as you do the call-in version of the Panther, which, unlike the EZ-8, does not get cheaper if you build it. Um, oh, Matilda just smokes that machine gun. Yeah, and now it's gonna clear it as well. Yeah, so you see... So, Jiro trying to build a panther, so he didn't do the call-in option, and that means that if uh, his tier 4 is knocked out, he's going to have to uh, rebuild it just to, to build more panthers. Yeah. So, Dumbass went for the, uh, the armored vehicle training as well now. Which makes sense. I would yeah. honestly expect him to uh, potentially roll into some grants. Yeah, let's see if he took the training oh. already. No, he doesn't have the, the ground to lock yet. Oh, foot guards, smoke the cat and crowd. players are, are just floating so much fuel. Yeah, well, and then the problem here is like, it's like anti-infantry and team weapons. These two Panthers are more than a match for the Matilda Three and the Panthers. Crusader. But they're not... They're yeah. gonna get knocked out by these AT guns that the allies have on the side. Yeah, one more salvo here. Six-pounder, I guess the smoke from the Panther, somehow the six-pounder doesn't shoot and follow up. Yeah, I think it was out of vision. Yeah, I would get this other Panther out of there, the foot guards. Oh, uh, and they are forced to retreat. Now, if Axis can get a mass of Panthers, like they're clearly working towards, they can do yeah, a lot of- and the allies are in trouble. Yeah. But only the vehicles, the team weapons still hard counter the Panthers. And so yeah, this is true. where, like you were pointing out, the need for some like elite infantry, like not Grenadiers, but Stoss Troop and Panzer Grenadiers. You, you need them to counter these team weapons. Oh, one Gren squad goes down in the center to the Brens. Both Axis players lost a lot of infantry though. Yeah. Now, Naval Warfare Barrage coming in on the ammo cache and Ares' little uh, artillery city over here. He's got four <laughs> pallets already. Oh, man. Oh, man. Everything's hitting the base. It's almost risky to, like, retreat your units at this point. <laughs> you could probably better leave them on the, on the front line than in the base. I don't yeah. know where you would die. <laughs> oh, man. These Panthers. Oh, and here comes the rocket strafe. Yeah. Nice first dodge. The second one as well. Nice. Yeah, the, the worst <laughs> rocket gunners in history. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they were lined up so nicely. Oh, oh and then it hits them outside of the circle. Oh, a lot of damage to that panther. Yeah, we are more rocket strafe. Oh no, don't move forward! <laughs> don't move forward with the Panther because now they come back! Yeah, now they're coming back. Oh, it's sitting still. It takes a couple of hits there, but it does force the Crusader back. Yeah, but now the, the Panther needs a lot more repairs. <laughs> and with the Archie Barrage here. Oh, oh my oh, gosh! Wow, that's Why did it get hit there? Oh. God, Was it still locked off? Those noise sometimes with this such weird things. Oh, no. these Wespy is gonna go into the... Oh, <laughs> There's no. the shock. Oh, no. And now comes the, the rocket. No, don't move into the circle. Oh, my God. That's so many howitzers. Is that a fifth? That's a fifth howitzer. Ares, you absolute <laughs> oh, <yeah>. troll. <laughs> oh, my gosh.
Uh, I, and I don't think the axes are able to punish this. No. It's it, they've reached a critical mass here. Not, yeah. Uh, one panther get, goes down. Oh. Naval warfare wanders forward. He gets cleared. You can see yeah. the Axis players thinking. They're like, how do we manage this? Get a Vespa. But one Vespa is not going to clear five no, Palitzers. No, Naval Warfare does a lot more damage than a Vespa on all these points. Oh, man. Oh, and these crew yeah. shocks from all the Palitzers. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Ooh, Vespa West goes down. Annihilated. I'm just going to go for the cinematic view here. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you should definitely go for the cinematic view. Oh, this panther. So, I know we're in Rotterdam, but this feels more like a reverse Battle of the Bulge. <laughs> or no, like more like, uh, what is it called? Uh, oh, on Bastogne. On Bastogne. Like Bastogne. No, yeah. this feels more like the Somme, my friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> artillery and artillery. Oh, man. Oh, goodness. Oh my gosh, the boys have now knocked out the bunkers and are rolling right into the base. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man. Meanwhile, look at this. Gatsby still trying to cap up. You gotta admire the determination to not quit here. I'm pretty interested to see how these TTK changes like <laughs> buffed these infantry assaults. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Oh, now here it comes. Oh. This building is smoke. Oh, there's the, uh, oh no, I lost the main building. And this panther in the back is at risk of going down. One more. The boys are running back though. Yeah, oh, but the boys call in. Oh my goodness, one more hit and this panther is done. <laughs> it's standing just aside of ridge. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. the crusader. Oh, here comes the crusader. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, Jiro. Yeah, I I feel you, buddy. This this yeah, went from an this... even game to a not even game. Yeah, really, real quick. And yeah, the allies just trying to get the uh, the triple cap on here. But man, like <laughs> the artillery flares on the headquarters. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the rate for the, yeah, the assault flares. Oh man. I guess if you clear like every building, even like the bunkers, you, the enemy automatically Is this loses. gonna be an annihilation victory? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> they have to be fast though. They probably shouldn't cap the site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the boys are back already? Yeah, oh that, that's that gotta get fixed, holy crap. <laughs> there we go, there's the HQ knocked out. And that's yeah. it, that's an annihilation victory in a 2v2. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, so doing an abbreviated breakdown here, starting with the Axis. So Gatsby, he starts with two Pioneers and four Grenadiers. Does the, the Tier 1 Officer's Quarters, which ends up being like his primary tech decision throughout the course of this game. His mid-game leans on the Stummel and the 8-Rod. Unfortunately, they don't last that long. And then he techs kind of into Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, eventually gets a couple of Panthers out, which is his late-game strategy. As you can see, not a super balanced build. Um, I think the overinvestment into Grenadiers in the beginning kind of cost him a little bit. It's something we've seen recently. And then for his battle group breakdown, obviously he goes raid package, eight rod, and then Panther Colin, which I think is smart. And we'll talk about that when we talk about Jiro. Uh, on the opposite side of the battle group, he goes for the spotting scopes, the Vespa, which he does build at one point, but it just basically gets annihilated. Uh, and then the, the uh, artillery, the zeroing artillery strike. For Jiro, his teammate, he starts with a Pioneer and MG42 into three Grens, also does the Tier 1 Officer's Quarters. I really like this tech choice for both players, right? When you're playing heavy into Tier 1, getting that Officer's Quarters out is really helpful. Um, but then he builds the Med Bunker. I think Gatsby also does like the, the Med healing back at his base. When you've got the Grenadiers and you get the veter Veteran C1 from the Tier 1 Officer's Quarters, like the whole point of that is so you don't have to do your own healing. But Jiro at least has a strategy to make it effective, right? He builds that cache, gets a forward retreat point um, close to his base. I think that's really smart and it lasts a long time until the Americans get the artillery supremacy. His mid-game starts with 8-rod and 8-rod, and he gets some pack 40s. He gets side techs for a naval warfare. It makes sense with what they're dealing with. He's just on the back foot at this point. Um, the big issue here, as you can see from the battle group, 
he selects the Panther um, construction from tier four. And this is kind of the death knell for him because as Ares artillery is coming in and knocking out base structures, at least if you had chosen the call in, even though it costs you a bunch of CPs, it would give you the opportunity to continue to call those vehicles onto the field. Once you lose your tier four, now you're gated behind that 120 fuel structure again, just to be able to start building those Panthers. So um, not something that he could have necessarily anticipated, but I think if you're really worried about Artie, same thing when you're playing against the Brits and you see a bunch of bishops, like if, if soon as they look like they're starting to bombard your base or anything like that, uh, lean towards Collins for sure uh, to avoid that being an issue in the long run. And then for the allies here, Ares, his basic strategy, he starts really aggressive with three rifles, immediately attacks BARs and grenades. He wants that infantry force to kind of carry him through the game while he spends all of his fuel uh, on the howitzers. He gets a mechanized support center. We talked about it a little bit during the cast. It's an interesting choice. It potentially allows him to get out the 76 mil Shermans, uh, but he doesn't really end up using any of that. And so I think maybe even the ASC might have been a better choice here because then at least he can use the Grasshopper Run to spot for all of his artillery. Um, yeah, at that point, you're spending all your munitions on the, the boys' uh, infantry assault. So uh, interesting choice in Mechanized Support Center. I'll give him shit for it later. Um, he gets really to his mid-game is just some AT guns continuing to lean on those rifles for, for capping power. And then his end game is five of the M2A1 howitzers uh, with ammunition storage uh, to increase their or decrease their cooldown. So you can see here his battle group breakdown. He uh, obviously selects the Rangers but doesn't actually use them. He gets the infantry uh, or the designated assault position, which I think he uses once early on to decent effect. And then the infantry assault, aka the boys, which he uses to great effect throughout the game. Um, and I, I really like this. He basically uses it. If you think about it, he's converting essentially munitions into manpower, right? Every time he uses this and he's not spending munitions on much else. So using these assaults, free leverage, free pressure on the enemy, super effective. And he's using that to buy himself the time and the space to get those howitzers onto the field so that uh, dumbass isn't fighting this whole thing by himself. On the opposite side of the battle group, obviously the ammo depot, um, he gets the, the howitzer. And then he goes through the free fire drills, which, um, you know, it kind of makes sense. You don't need the rapid barrage. when You've got five howitzers and you definitely don't want to sink the munitions into anything but that that boys infantry assault. So uh, smart breakdown here uh, on the U.S. side. And then for dumbass, he starts with the dingo and in three infantry sections. He really focuses a lot of his effort into those early fuel and munitions caches. With the Air and Sea Battle Group, you get the uh, the auto construction and the reduced price on the caches, so it makes sense. And they leverage that fuel uh, to great effect throughout the game. And then really, you just see at that point, like he selects the Centaur but doesn't use it. He uses the Raiding Flares, um, which are helpful a couple of times. I think, you know, if Ares goes for the Air Support Center and you get that Grasshopper Recce run, then you can instead go for the Naval Artillery, which would have just been like the icing on the cake. Um, super, super powerful ability. On the opposite side, he activates the commandos, but doesn't actually call any of them in. And then you saw the Hawker uh, or the Hurricane um, rocket run, uh, anti-vehicle rocket run later on in the game. Um, and it, it makes sense to me, the breakdown. He used it a couple times to balance the vehicle stuff out. He definitely had the resources to potentially go Grand Slate game. So um, that's kind of the, the battle group there. Um, his end game is basically Matildas and foot guards. Brit late game is really hard to deal with, especially when you have that much artillery support. All right, uh, we're back. Uh, so, you know, obviously did a little bit of review of the build order here, but uh, Fred, I just wanted to kick it over to you because I know we were talking about kind of the overinvestment in tier one on the Axis side. And so, um, and, and kind of the issues that even Panzer Grenadiers have on this map. So I'll, I'll kick it over to you for your thoughts there. So, what we saw from, I think it was Gatsby or Jiro. I don't know, I think it was Gatsby. He went for like the, the tier one, the infantry officer squatters, mm -hmm. which was good because it helps you uh, skill do better against riflemen and 1v1s with your grenadiers. Mm -hmm. But then, right after, also going for the base healing, which kind of is needed because the, the veteran grenadiers also have like healing. Mm -hmm. So, that kind of delayed the eight rats as well. If you wanted to go for eight reds, you should, well, 
it should come out at the exact timing. Otherwise, the allies have a lot of AT guns and things to deal with it. So, yeah, I, I guess. No, I, I think yeah. you, you hit the nail on the head there, right? So they overinvested a little bit. They spent a little bit too much fuel early, especially when fuel was already a concern. And what they didn't necessarily realize is that the allies were heavily invested into getting an early fuel advantage with the, the early cash on their own. Um, yeah. Fuel. And so, yeah, so the power spike that you normally see from two guys playing mechanized and getting eight rods on the field at the same time, instead, uh, the allies had a bunch of AT guns. The eight rods did some damage, uh, but then were pretty much knocked out. And, and you see the value of the double AT gun set up because by the time the eight rod realizes it's getting shot at, it takes two rounds and is either dead or it needs, you know, five minutes of repairs. So. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, and after that, you saw like, uh, after that, you saw a really late tier four. And I think Gatsby went for the Panzer Grenadiers. Mm -hmm. And I think at that point, it's better to go for Stoss Troopen as well. Yeah, especially against the team weapons. I feel like the Stoss Troopen like, advantage at range, they just burn down AT guns. Um, yeah. And so, like, you know, obviously this was like a, a fun, well, fun game for the allies. I thought the Axis did a pretty good job of spreading out and contesting parts of the map. Um, and they had tons of resources that they were floating. The issue that they ran into uh, in the late game was like the combination of counters that were required for them to be viable. So you had the Panthers to counter the Matilda and the Crusader, but then you didn't have late game infantry to deal with the foot guards or the triple vet rifles or the AT guns. Yeah. And then at the same time, like what, what you really need is some sort of like counter artillery. But once those howitzers start to vet up and they get the charged shells, like they, it, they just start to debuff all of your units as the rounds come in. So I think like the little choices in the early game um, that are more early game focused and then losing a lot of those vehicles, wasting a lot of that fuel, the Axis were in a point late game where they're like, we don't really have any good options. Panthers are good for the vehicles, we don't do anything against infantry. We need yeah. Stoss Troop and our Pegrens. Um, yeah, and, and that was the thing with the Naval Warfare as well. The Naval Warfare came out, but came out way too late as well. So yeah. you probably want one, after you see like one howitzer, you probably should be thinking, okay, maybe I need a Naval Warfare. Because the Wespy, I don't know, I think it's less efficient in dealing with static emplacements. Because mm -hmm. the Naval Warfare has also the fire damage, which burns the, the emplacement uh, after the firing. So... Now, what like, would have been... I probably should have go gone for like two neighbor warfare and then start. Uh, how do I say this? Like starts barraging, like after each other. So when the w one is on cooldown, the other one should start barraging. So you you yeah. don't give the allies an opportunity to repair them. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other option they both went mechanized, and so uh, spoiler alert: we do the reviews immediately after watching the game. I haven't looked at gone back and looked at the build order extensively yet, but. Um, if they had gotten the zeroing artillery because they're both a mechanized commander, uh, yeah. it's expensive. But like the number one way to knock down a Sim City like that is a couple salvos of that zeroing artillery. Uh, and so, <laughs> yeah, it's especially good. well, because think about how close those houses are together and that ammunition cache. Like um, that actually would have been a solid counter if they'd had the munitions for it and if they could have gotten sight. So lots of ifs there. Um, and and I think the like I said, the allies just knew those players came in and said, we know this is going to be a 35 minute game. We don't care. We're going to play to win at the 35 minute mark. Um, and I think they did a good job of setting up for that. Whereas I think the, the Axis were looking to make it a 10 or a 12 minute game. Um, and as soon as they lost their light, their light vehicle power spike, like as soon as the eight yeah. rods and the summer were gone, well, it just, it turns the corner on you. And then, um, even with the resources, they're just kind of sitting there like, we have lots of fuel, we have lots of manpower, I don't know what to build, because I don't have any answers. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. Well, this is a hell of a way to start a weekend morning, so I appreciate you uh, jumping into Cassis with me. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hats off to Ares and his teammate Dumbass. Uh, his name's not actually Dumbass, but I don't know why he, he changed his Steam handle. Uh, I'm not going to call out their real names, but <clears throat> thank you for sending this in. I have not seen an Annihilation victory in 2v2 until now, so well done. Uh, and to Jiro and Gatsby, well played. Really excellent uh, early game. 
wish it had worked out differently for you, but um, you know, there's always next game. So uh, thanks, Fred, and uh, that's going to do it for us here. Bye-bye.